Well, good evening, everybody. God kveld, alle sammen. And also to our worldwide audience, good også, evening and good til, morning, wherever you are in the world. Også til uh, vår uh, verdensvide tilskueskare, enten det vil si god morgen eller god kveld, hvor vi har sett hvor det er en. I'd like to congratulate you on this uh, wonderful symposium. This is a very courageous and necessary initiative. And I thank God for the director of the Norwegian branch, Mr. Leif Ellerop. Well, thank God for me. <laughs> yes. And his wonderful team. And uh, for what they have done here in these days. It's truly been a remarkable time. And the word from Eric Seller tonight. Has been an important word. A short word. But a very important word. That don't be ashamed of who you are. So be ikke bli skamda av hvem du er. And the values that you subscribe to. Og de verdiene du står for. These are the values that made the Western world great. Det er disse verdiene som gjorde den vestlige verden stor. And we thank God for them. Og det takker vi Gud for. And we're not ashamed of them. Vi er ikke skammer oss ikke over dem. I want to talk to you tonight in a way about the things that we have said over the last two days. And I want to first of all refer us to the word of God. First of all, to refer to Isaiah chapter 5 Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Ve dem som kaller det onde godt og det gode ondt, som gjør mørke til lys og lys til mørke, som gjør bittert til søtt og søtt til bittert. We need to ask the question again tonight as we have over these last two days. Vi må igjen i kveld stille spørsmålet som vi har gjort de siste dagene. On what foundations do the western democracies stand? Hvilke fundament er det det vestlige demokratiet står på? Please notice that I did not ask on what foundations were they founded. But on what foundations do they stand today? It is true that foundations set in place the moral soul and value of a nation. It's like a building. It has to go in the direction of the foundation. Det er en bygning. Det må gå i retning av grunnmuren. And these foundations will ultimately dictate the type of building we have. Og disse vil vi da til syvende og sist bestemme hvilken bygning vi har. And once we have these foundations, we then have our world view. Og så snart vi har disse grunnfundamentene, så har vi også verdens synspunktene våre. So we have to ask the question. Så vi må stille spørsmål. How would you describe this today? Hvordan vil du beskrive dette i dag? What are the moral foundations of Norway? It's a very important question. We need to ask then another question. How do you think Winston Churchill would be received today by the political establishment? It's easy to revere someone because they are dead. He was one of the greatest leaders the world has ever seen. It's not far-fetched to say that if it were not for Winston Churchill, you would be sitting under the Third Reich tonight. It was a man of backbone. Det var en mann med ryggrad. A man of determination. En mann med bestemmelse. That changed the world. Som forandret verden. And stood against the tyranny of Nazism. Og stå opp mot nazismens tyranni. He did it alone. Han gjorde det alene. When the whole of the West was in a mode of appeasement. Da hele Vesten var i annen modum. But one man stood up. Men en mann stod opp. And he challenged Nazism. Han utfordret nazismen. Winston Churchill saw Nazism. Winston Churchill saw Nazism as an assault on the Christian Western democracy. Som et angrep på de kristne vestlige demokratiene. He had a Christian world view. Han hadde en kristen verdenssynspunkt. And his Christian world view hans kristne verdenssynspunkt then dictated his understanding of right and wrong. Dikterte da hans forståelse på det som var galt og rett. His sense of good and evil. Hans følelse for godt og vondt. And therefore he was able to discern evil when he saw it. Og derfor var han i stand til å bedømme 
ondskapen när han såg det. And he knew what it was. Han visste vad det var. It is true that throughout the United Kingdom today. Det är sant att genom hela Storbritannien idag. His portrait hangs in many buildings. Så hänger porträttet hans i många byggnader. And his statue can be found around London. Och statuen av kan bli funnit runt i London. And other places. Och andra städer. But I fear. That if he entered the political arena today, if he's only come in on the political arena in any Western country, in which Western land, some hell, he would be regarded as a radical right winger. So we're not going to set up as a radical right winger and a bigot, or a shelterling, because he subscribed clearly, for he had a clear stand for. To a Christian Judeo value system. A Christian Judeo value system. It is this system. That is the system that gave order to his world. So God ordered for world. As I said, a sense of right and a sense of wrong. In the first side, it was the right, it was the wrong. He had a moral compass that guarded his heart. And the moral compass that steered his heart. And he defended the world. And for sure, the world against what he called. Mot det som han kallade the barbaric hordes of Nazis. Den bara de barbariska hallen i nazismen. Thank God for Winston Churchill. Tack Gud för Winston Churchill. Have Salona. Have Salona. Have Salona. The previous spokesman for the European Union. The Tilly the Talsman for the European Union. Stated a few years ago. Han sa för några år sedan. That the European Union does not believe in the right or the wrong of a matter or good and evil. Att den europeiska unionen inte trodde på det som är rätt eller galet i en sak eller som är ont eller ont eller gott. He then went on to say. Han fortsatte så att säga. That this is an outdated way of thinking. Och det är en utdaterad måte att tänka på. That only takes place today. Det finns det bara idag. In countries like the United States of America. I land som USA. For him, the foreign policy of the European Union. For him, was EU's utrikes politik. Was based on expediency. Baserat på In other words, that which is good for the moment. There is a pastor in Ebleke. A form of existentialism. In form for existentialism. Without any sense of right or wrong. Without any sense of what is right or wrong. Without any sense of good and evil. Without any sense of what is right or wrong. If the shoe fits, then wear it. We school pastors are taught for. In other words, we will speak to Hamas or Hezbollah if necessary. In other words, we will talk with Hamas or Hezbollah if they are needed. We don't see them as good and evil. We see them as good and evil. It's a it's a system of expediency. They're in the big family system. And so the Judeo-Christian value system. So the Judeo-Christian value system. Upon which Europe was built. So Europe was built upon. For a thousand years and more, for two thousand years and more, has been despised. Has been despised in a few decades. For the four ten years, isn't that amazing? I can't even imagine. A Judeo-Christian value system. A Judeo-Christian value system that took rest, took power, so it took macht in Europe. In Europe, for a thousand years. For two thousand years. Has been rejected, despised, verracted, in a few decades. By the way, for forty years, and no one can deny. We can confirm that this is the value system upon which the West was built. Of this, our liberty system is on Western be built for. Because from the cities and towns of Europe, for from the cities and towns of Europe, and out into the villages and countryside, or for out into the countryside, you can see thousands of cathedrals and churches and chapels. So we can see thousands of churches, cathedrals, and chapels that bear testimony, so we are witness bearers to the great value system, to the great value system that made the West great, so we made the West great. So we have a person like Prince Charles today. So we have a person like Prince Charles in England today. The king in waiting. The coming king. In waiting. The coming. In waiting. Coming. In waiting. Coming. He says. He says. 
that if he ever came to power as king, he would no longer be the defender of the faith. Meaning the Christian faith, but of the faiths. Men av troer, Plural. Tro, troene, i Many religious systems and gods. Mange religiøse systemer og guder. And in that one statement, og i den ene uttalelsen der, in his naivete, i, i den naivitet, he despises a thousand years. Så forakter han tusen år of European history. Med europeisk historie. The truth is, sannheten er, Chave Salana is right. Chave Salana har rett. Europe has no moral compass. Europa har ikke noe moralsk kompass. And has resorted to what I call. Og har hengitt seg til det vi kaller. Punitive democracy. Punitive democracy. Demokrati. Punitive. What is punitive? Democracy that punishes. Demokrati som straffer. And by that I mean. Og ved det mener jeg. The rights of the majority. Flertallets rett are constantly being degraded to suit the rights of the minority. For instance, for example, when I first visited democratic Britain in the early 1980s, there were Christian prayers in schools readings from the Bible de leste fra Bibelen, and local preachers og lokale predikanter were routinely called in to share life and character building sermons with the students. Ble regelmessig påkalt, tilkalt for å dele uh, oppbyggelige prekener til studentene. This was done in a non-sectarian manner and gave moral direction to the students in the most vital years of their growth and development. So let me ask you, would this happen today? Let me ask you another question. Why not? It's a good question. Det er godt spørsmål. Why not? Hvorfor ikke? We are talking about a democracy just three decades ago. Vi taler med en demokrati for tre, ti år siden. That had no problem with that. Som ikke hadde noen problemer med det. Because it was the overwhelming value system of the majority. For dette var flertallets veldig majoritet. But it won't happen today. Because the minority are demanding that their imported value system be honored and given precedence in their adopted countries. The conclusion is the rights and the cultural values of the majority are being corroded and removed. This is punitive democracy. The rights of the majority are punished because of the demands of the minority. Both David Cameron, Både David Cameron and Angela Merkel, Angela Merkel have acknowledged recently that this experiment has failed. Har we have to ask the question Vi må stille at what cost to the majority? Kost var det for at what cost to a generation? Kost var det for How would we measure this generation? Vi måle denne In terms of the vacuum that has been provided by the removal of the Judeo-Christian system from the marketplace by the following by the increase in drug addiction alcoholism disrespect for authority lawlessness sexual promiscuity and the destruction of the family. This is the legacy that has stepped into this vacuum. And who can deny it?
I want to talk for a few moments about hypocrisy. Jeg vil gerne tale noget for øjeblikket om hykleri. Last weekend, sidste weekend, I listened to a debate on Sky News. Så lyttede jeg til debat på Sky News på TV. That included a panel discussion. Som også omfattede en paneldiskussion between high-ranking politicians. Med mellem højstående politikere. One was the former British ambassador to the United Nations. En var tidligere britisk ambassadør til FN. The question being discussed was this. Og spørsmålet som vi diskuterte var dette. It was fascinating. Det var fascinerende. How can the Western democracies avoid the accusation of being perceived as hypocrites? Hvordan kan de vestlige demokratiene takle spørsmålet om å bli beskyldt for hykleri? In North Africa and the wider Middle East region. Når det gjelder Sør-Afrika og den videre Midtøsten regionen. This was the discussion. Det var diskussionen. How can the Western democracy? Hvordan kan de vestlige demokratiene? Escape from the accusation. Udslippe anklagene. That they are hypocrites. At de er hyklere. The question is being asked. Spørsmålet blir stilt. Because they are hypocrites. Fordi de er hyklere. That's the truth. Det er sannheten. Lacking any moral compass, de mangler et vært moralsk kompass. They have got themselves on the wrong side of history. De har plassert seg selv på den gale siden av historien. And they know it. Og de vet det. So how do you extract yourself from this embarrassing situation? Så hvordan trekker du deg da tilbake fra denne forvirrede situasjonen? So let's take for instance Mamwa Gaddafi. La oss ta for eksempel Gaddafi. Just two months ago, Bare for to måneder siden, he was globally respected so var han over hele jorden, as the leader of Libya. So Libya's leader, Western leaders like Tony Blair, leaders like Tony Blair were rushing to meet with him. For møte ham. They sat in his palatial reception tent. De satt i hans, uh, telt. They kissed him on both cheeks. Og på begge <laughs> ja, ja. Who was Gaddafi? You and me. <laughs> Tony Blair. <laughs> Tony Blair. <laughs> just two months ago, this is what Gaddafi was. But for two months ago, this is what Gaddafi was. In just a few weeks, om nogle få uger, he suddenly became a dictator. So he became a dictator. A thug. A sheltering. A brutal murderer. Brutal murderer. A despot. Despot. And a totalitarian dictator. And a totalitarian dictator. And he had to go immediately. Why must he be arrested immediately? Is this true? Is this true? What do you think? What is do? The answer is no. Svaret er nei. Listen to me. L- Lyt etter nå. In just two weeks he became Bare i løpet av to uker a thug så ble han en kjeltring a totalitarian dictator en totalitær diktator a torturer and a murderer en tor- torturist og en murderer Is that true? Er det sant? No. Nei. He always was that. Han var alltid slik. Do you understand me? Forstår du meg? He always was that. Han var slik hele tiden. But because the western democracies Men fordi de vestlige demokratiene have no sense of right or wrong har ingen følelse av hva som er rett eller galt or good or evil eller godt eller ondt we let murdering thugs go unhindered så lar vi morderiske kjeltringer fortsette uhindret and even admire them og til og med beundrer dem. Actually we will even let their terrorists out of our jails. Vi vil faktisk også slippe terroristene ut av fengsler. On bogus medical reports. På grunn av merkelige medisinske rapporter. In order to get at their lucrative oil resources. For å få adgang til deres lukrative oljeressurser. It means very little. Det betyr ingenting. That they murdered over 200 people over Lockerbie in Scotland. Og de myndet over 200 mennesker i Lockerbie i Skottland. So we will fabricate so we will fabricate <coughs> medical reports medicinske rapporter find a way to get them out of jail finne måter å få dem ut av fengsel på so that we can go slik at vi kan and make oil deals dra og gjøre oljeavtaler We have lost our way. Vi har er bommet på veien. 
And it's right that we have to sit down. Och det är rätt att vi måste sätta oss ned. And discuss how we can launch a propaganda machine. Hur vi och sätta oss ned och diskutera hur vi kan sätta igång en propagandamaskin. So that the people of North Africa. Slik att folk i Nordafrika. And the Middle East. Och Mellanöstern. Don't have to believe that we're hypocrites. Inte behöver du tro att vi är hypocriter. Vi är We absolutely are. För, för det är vi. I wonder how Hosni Mubarak feels. Vi lurar på hur Hosni Mubarak följer det nu. For decades he was the darling of the West. I tio år var han västens kärleksdigge. And was respected everywhere. Och blev respekterad överallt. As one of the moderate and sane voices in the Middle East arena. Som en av de moderata och förnuftiga stämmen i Mellanöstern. Acknowledging this. Och jag känner detta. President Barack Obama. Så stilte president Barack Obama. Flew to Cairo. Reste till Cairo. Greeted him with much affection. Och hälsade på med mycket förser. Isn't it sickening? It's laughable. Är det inte så sjukt att du kan lära dig? Said very nice things about him. Så väldigt fina ting om honom. And then with Mubarak sitting at his side. Och med Barack som satt vid sidan av hans. Obama gave a nice speech. Så gav Obama en fin tale. To the wider Islamic world. Till den vidare islamska världen. It was all so beautifully crafted and presented. Det var allt så flott skrivet ned och presenterat. Was it not? Var det inte? Just a few months later. Bara ett par månader senare. Obama said without any shame. Så Obama utan att skamma sig. That Mubarak had to get out immediately. Mubarak måste försvinna ibrikligt. And told him quite frankly. Och sa det ut till ham. In true American style. På typisk amerikansk stil. Get out of Dodge City. Kom nu ut av Dodge City. Now isn't this amazing? Okay, that's very unusual. Or is it the result of expedient value systems? Or is it the result of special value systems that have no sense of right or wrong? So you can only feel what's been called the right or good and evil. The good and wrong. The question is. Special air. Listen very carefully. Hear me yet, no. Did Mubarak become a dictator in just two weeks? Did Mubarak become a dictator in just two weeks? Or was he always a ruthless despot? Eller var han aldrig alltid en en hänsynslös despot? I think you all know the answer. Jag tror alla känner svaret. But the West, men Westen, without moral values, utan med utan moralska värderingar, abandoning its Judeo-Christian values, var förlåt sin kristen Judeo-Kristna värderingar, not concerned about right or wrong, och bryr sig inte om vad som är rätt eller galt, found itself, fanns sig själv. In bed with dictators. The sanks men dictator. A people's revolution. Folkets revolution. Brought home to everyone. Brought home to the world. What they always knew. To the we all always knew. But chose to ignore. Men valt att ignorera. Now the West has to get its propaganda campaign going. No more has to have the propaganda campaign going. To deflect the charge of hypocrisy. For to unvike anklagen of hypocrisy. We forgot our roots. We forgot our heritage. We forgot our heritage. We forgot our heritage. And thought that we knew better. Or thought that we knew better than the foundations upon which our nations and societies were built. For over a thousand years. As we gather here tonight, and as we gather here tonight, across the Middle East, 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 Let's say a few words about Israel. Let's see some words about Israel. Isn't it extraordinary? Är det inte förunderligt that the only functioning democracy in the Middle East att det enda fungerande demokrati i Mellanöstern is under siege from the West? Är under belägring av Västen. That's amazing. Det är förunderligt. 
It is constantly being misrepresented. Det blir konstant misforstått. Vilified and campaigned against. Og vi kan panne imot det. The boycott, disinvestment, Bo- sanctions movement. Boycott, uh, investeringsstopp, <coughs> sanksjoner. Is gathering momentum throughout the western world. Det får stadig mer tilslutning i den vestlige verden. And is actually forging alliances. Og fører til allianser between radical leftists and radical muslims men om radikale vänsterorienterade och radikala muslimer in order to delegitimize israel för att delegitimera israel israel apartheid week has just concluded israel's apartheid week har nettop avslutats which is actually an insult so mm. faktiskt är en fördärvelse against, against the 35 million black people in south africa för när man mot 35 miljoner svarta människor i afrika who suffered under real apartheid som led under verklig apartheid I'm not going to talk about that tonight. Det ska snacka om det ikväll. But I think I know something about it. Det tror jag vet nog om det. And I think I'm better placed than most. I'm better placed than most. Och jag står på en bättre plats än de flesta. To tell you without any fear of contradiction. Du ser utan någon frykt av av att bli motsagt. That Israel is not an apartheid state. Att Israel är inte en apartheidstat. But sadly those who seek to speak for Israel on the campuses of our world are shouted down. Are even assaulted. And their democratic right of free speech is removed from them. So that today Israeli Ministers of state cannot go to a university in most capitals of the world and put their case without their lives and their persons being in danger. Now I thought that universities were the bastions of democratic and behavior. That is where we send our best and our most brightful young people. That they might be educated and undergird our democracies. But today it is selective democracy. Så det är selektiv demokrati. It is punitive democracy. Det är straffande demokrati. You can put your viewpoint toward the du, people. Du kan ge din synspunkt till folk. If they agree with it. Visst är ni det. If they don't like it. Vi ser inte lika det. You're not allowed to speak. Så du har du tillåtelse att snacka. The vocal, intolerant, and highly aggressive minority <coughs> will ensure that no other voice is heard. So it is remarkable that Alan Dershowitz cannot even get his books into the universities of Norway. Why not? Because of intolerance. intolerance. You have the wrong view. Du har, du har feil synspunkt. And you cannot express your views here. Du kan ikke for dine synspunkter her. The truth is, as far as the West is concerned, er at når det Vesten, it is expedient så er det to enforce a settlement on the nation of Israel och tvinga en ett et system på nationen Israel that will endanger its very existence som vill sätta hela det landets existens i fara actually ladies and gentlemen faktiskt mina damer och herrar as i have discovered time and time again vi har sett gång efter gång truth means very little in this debate så betyder sanning väldigt lite i denna sån debatten oil means everything oil det betyder allt just this last week var det förra veckan israel seized an arm shipment so fick Israel en en båt med med vapen from Iran från Iran <coughs> destined for Hamas var det Hamas som mål tons and tons of sophisticated weaponry ton på ton med sofistikerade vapen which proves her case again som igen beviser vad hon gjorde 
concerning the ill-fated events <coughs> that had to do with the voyage of the Mavi Mamara. <coughs> Last year, they tried to block or break Israel's blockade. And just last weekend, or by no this weekend, Hamas launched 50 missiles. So sent Hamas 50 rockets in one weekend. In one weekend, weekend, 50 missiles. 50 rockets on the towns of Ashkelon and Ashdod. På byen Ashdod, Ashkelon, in the south of Israel. I Israel, surely there. The game here, ladies and gentlemen. Her, is Israel's total destruction. Israel's total and the West, because of its moral bankruptcy, bankruptcy and valueless culture, <coughs> is determined to push Israel into an agreement that will endanger her existence. Ignoring everything that the PLO was saying in Arabic, they rehabilitated Yasser Arafat, Arafat and paraded him around the world as a reformed terrorist. He even got the Nobel Peace Prize. The father of modern day terrorism. Faren til, det far til moderne dagers terrorisme. Who on his hands som på sine hender is the blood of thousands of innocents. Har blodet av tusener av uskyldige. He was never reformed. Han ble aldri reformert. And so after shaking the hand of Yitzhak Rabin så etter å ha tatt hånden i Yitzhak Rabin på plenen utenfor Hvite Hus sammen med Bill Clinton i november 1993 i november 1993 he journeyed just a few months later så det er noen få måneder senere in april of 1994 i april 1994 to attend the inauguration for å være med på møtet of Nelson Mandela as the first free president of South Africa. Da Nelson Mandela ble innsatt som første fri presidenten i Sør-Afrika. A few days later, noen få dager senere, Yasser Arafat went to a mosque in Johannesburg. Så besøkte Arafat en moské i Johannesburg. Where he addressed thousands of Muslims. Hvor han talte til tusener av muslimer. And he assured them. Og han forsikret dem. That the PLO had not moved away. At PLO ikke hadde beveget seg bort fra. From the 1964 plan. Fra 1964 planen for the phased destruction of Israel. Om fase legelsen av Israel. His speech was recorded. Talen hans ble tatt opp. It's on record. Den er på teip. For all to hear. For alle kan høre hva han sa. But it was ignored by the West. Men det ble ignorert av Vesten. Why? Hvorfor? It's a good question. Det er et godt spørsmål. Why? Hvorfor? Anyone who listens to the Arabic broadcasts of Fatah or Hamas will hear the same message every day. It is not as if one has to understand Arabic to get this message. For å få tak i budskapet. Because organizations like Memory. For de organisasjoner som Memory. Middle East Media Research Institute. Det er et institutt i Midtøsten som tar opp slike sendinger. And the Palestinian Media Watch. Og palestinske media watch. Will translate this for you. De vil oversette det for deg. For all to read. Så alle kan lese det. They don't change it. De forandrer det ikke. They don't edit it. De redigerer det ikke. They just translate what has been said every day. De bare oversetter det som er sagt hver dag. And every day, og hver dag, in Arabic, i Arabisk, they call for the total destruction of Israel. Så kaller de på Israels total ødeleggelse. It's just a click away. Det er bare et klikk borte. But the West is deaf. Men Vesten er døv. Actually very deaf. Faktisk veldig døv. Again, we have to ask the question. Og igjen må vi stille spørsmålet. Why? Hvorfor? 
The area known today as the West Bank <coughs> is now largely in the hands of the Palestinian Authority uh, under Mahmoud Abbas. <coughs> or is it? <coughs> or is it? Is it? Is it? What do you think? What do Or what do you know? It's a better question. Det er bedre spørsmål. Is it true? Er det sant? Why are elections being postponed, postponed, postponed all the time? Hvorfor blir valg utsatt, utsatt, utsatt hele tiden? These are very important questions. Det er viktig spørsmål. The answer is simple. Hva svaret er enkelt? The area has been infiltrated by Hamas. Området har blitt infiltrert av Hamas. Abbas is a weak, lame duck leader. Abbas, Abbas er en svak uh, leder. And he knows that he will be removed and replaced. Og vet at han vil bli fjernet og satt og, 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 fra en annen. By a terrorist regime. By a terrorist regime. That will then have Ben Gurion Airport in its gun sights. Så da vil ha Ben Gurion flyplass innenfor sin rekkevidde med sine våpen. This is no exaggeration. Det er ingen overdrivelse. As I said a moment ago, the information concerning all of this is a click away. And yet it is ignored. And the pressure mounts on Israel to complete the rule of Hamas. That will let them into Judea and Samaria. And thereby create og skape a terrorist nightmare a terrorist not, uh, on Israel's border. Israel's in the heart. I so what happened to right and wrong? So what, sker med galt og rett? what happened to good and evil? What happened to good and evil? How many of us have read the Palestinian Charter? Hvor mange av dere har lest det palestinske charteret? How many of us have read the Charter of Hamas? Hvor mange har lest Hamas charter? Therefore you will know Derfor vil du vite that the destruction clauses at de paragrafene som har med ødeleggelse å gjøre relating to the whole removal of Israel som har å gjøre med Israels totale fjerning are still there. Er fortsatt der. Why? Hvorfor? For the record, <coughs> the only legal document, det eneste lovlige dokument, that is binding and is international in character, som er bindende og som er internasjonalt i sin karakter, is that of the mandate for Palestine, er det som er mandatet for Palestina, passed by the League of Nations in 1922. It was fully affirmed by Article 80 of the United Nations Charter. And thus fully recognized by the world body. It is still valid today. And this is what it states. Quote, Citat, this mandate grants the Jews gir jødene, the irrevocable right den, uh, rett, to settle anywhere in Palestine, ned, i Palestina, the area between the Jordan River eh, elven, and the Mediterranean Sea. Og mid og Unquote. Citat, slut. I want to emphasize that under international law, law it remains unaltered so er den and valid to this day. Helt til dag. What does this mean to you and me? Dette for deg og meg? In conclusion, <coughs> til slutt, we live in a world that has lost its way. Vi lever i verden som har mistet veien. Melanie Phillips, Melanie Phillips, the renowned British journalist, den kjente britiske journalisten, acknowledges this in her new book, og den kjenner dette i sin nye bok, called, som er kalt, The World Turned Upside Down. Verden snudde opp ned. 
She writes, and I quote, it was Christianity and the Hebrew Bible that gave us our concepts of reason, progress and an orderly world, the foundations of science and modernity, the loss of religious belief, has meant the West has replaced reason and truth with ideology and prejudice which it enforces in the manner of a secular inquisition. The result has been a kind of mass derangement mass change as truth and lies Right and wrong, victim and aggressor, are all turned upside down. Unquote. She is right. Shall we ask the question again? On what foundations? Are our Western democracies built today? Er vår vestlige demokrati bygget på i dag? Bankrupt, secular, neutral values. Konkurs, sekulære, neutrale verdier. The overthrow and the rejection de å forkaste ut of a Judeo-Christian value system den judeo-kristne verdisystemet that undergirded the continent som bygget opp kontinentet for more than a thousand years. I mer enn tusen år. So Western diplomats so vestlige diplomater will now begin the process vil nå begynne prosessen of trying to convince the Arab world og prøve å overvise den arabiske verden and beyond og utover det that they are not hypocrites. At de ikke er hyklere. And that they've always been on the side of democracy. At de alltid har vært på demokratiet side and freedom. The spin machine has now begun. The spin machine has now begun. Do you believe it? Through it. After all the kissing. After all the kissing. Mamba Gaddafi. Mamba Gaddafi. Hosni Mubarak. Hosni Mubarak. My dear friends. Dear friends. This symposium is not something whereby we should all feel downhearted. It's time for us to stand up. Actually, we have a thousand years of history on our side. Vi har faktisk tusen års historie på vår side. So what are we ashamed of? Så er vi skammer oss over. And it's time for us to stand up and be heard. Og det er på tide vi står opp og reiser oss og blir hørt. Because the very destiny and well-being of our nations depends on it. Fordi vår nasjoners velstand og skjebne er avhengig av dette. And this symposium has begun a movement that will call people to think again about their roots, their foundations, and the importance of the word of the living God that we call the Bible that shaped the very character of Europe som ristet i Europas karakter, and liberated men into freedom, og satt mennesker fri i frihet, it was not secular humanists, det er ikke sekulære humanister, that came up with the Red Cross movement, som startet det Røde Korsbevegelsen, it was an evangelical Christian, det var en evangelisk kristen, who was a Christian Zionist, som var en kristen sionist, it was not some secular humanist, that liberated the world from slavery. It was an evangelical Christian who also was a Christian Zionist. Wilberforce
and the light of their inspiration did not come from themselves. But from the God of heaven who enshrined his word and the principles of true human freedom in this book it was not secular humanists that built schools and hospitals and orphanages across the continent of Europe and Great Britain It was evangelical Christians. The Salvation Army. Spread throughout the world. William Booth. William Booth. Orphanages. Barnum. Like that in England. George Muller. George Muller. It was the Christian ethic that made God the center of all things. Not man. But that recognized that God ha that man has a unique dignity because he's created in the image of God. So therefore, William Wilberforce, so therefore William Wilberforce looked at slaves so på slaver, and said, this cannot be. Sa, Slik kan det ikke være. People with such dignity Folk med slik dignitet, reduced to such servitude. De, uh, slavery. Kunne, kunne til slik slavery. And even my resistance against the apartheid movement did not come from myself. It came from this book. How can 35 million people be robbed of their dignity? My dear friends, let us be strong. Let us be full of courage. Let us stand up. Let us be proud. For God is with us. Thank you. Thank you.